In my opinion, the AWS Solutions Architect Associate is the most valuable certification for beginners. But there's a huge amount that you need to know, and it's easy to waste time and money on the wrong things. As a self-taught cloud engineer now working for a large bank in London, I'm going to show you step-by-step step how I passed the AWS Solutions Architect exam with all the resources that I used. So the first thing I did was to learn the content. As I'm sure you know, there's many Solutions Architect Associate courses out there. I've tried a lot of them for different AWS certifications. For example, Udemy courses, A Cloud Guru, and the free YouTube videos. All of them are great in their own right, but there's one that stands out. Personally, I use Adrian Cantrell's course, and I genuinely believe that it's the best one. It's very simple to understand, the content is presented well, but the biggest advantage is that I think he explains things in enough detail to actually help you build stuff. Other courses may just tell you the facts that you need to pass the certification, but at the end of the day, this knowledge is useless unless it actually helps you build things in AWS. Now, a common criticism I see of his course is that it's too long and a lot of it isn't really relevant to the certification. But I guess it depends on what your priorities are. If you just want the facts and figures to pass the exam without fully understanding all the details, then maybe another course is better for you. I would warn you not to do this though, particularly for the Solutions Architect Associate. The knowledge that you gain from passing this certification is really, really important, even more so than some of the other certs. The knowledge here is foundational for AWS. You don't really want to rush through and not fully understand things. But whatever course you take, you want to be taking notes the right way. Otherwise, you could spend hours watching a course, look down at your notes and realize that you understand none of it. What's worked really well for me is firstly watching a video within a course without making any notes at all. I'm purely 100% focused on trying to understand the content. If there's something I don't understand, I'd open up ChatGPT and ask them to explain again in a simplified way without any technical jargon. Once the video is finished and I'm sure that I understood all of it, I mean, really understood all of it and make some notes on the key things that I've learned. Basically, the goal of these notes is to try and summarize the key points in a video. I used to try to remember the exact phrasing that the instructor used and write my notes like that. But when I reviewed my notes again, I found that I couldn't really understand all of it. So instead, I now write everything completely in my own words as if I was explaining this topic or service to someone else. This forced me to actually understand the concept and pointed out any gaps in my knowledge. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I did struggle with this a lot at first. There's been a lot of times where I watch a video and think, oh yeah, I understand this, this makes sense. But then when I try to explain it in my own words, I'd either start going blank or start using a bunch of technical jargon that didn't really make sense. I really like this quote from Cajun Koi Academy on YouTube. The only way you're gonna learn is by struggling with the info in your brain. So if it feels hard, then that's a good sign that you're actually understanding it. After I'd made my notes, I watched the video again to make sure that I covered everything important. But there was another even more important thing that I did. Using AWS is not a theoretical or academic skill. You know, in the real world, you actually have to be able to build things. So I made sure that I did all of the labs in Adrian's course, and I'd highly recommend that you do the same for whatever course you decide to take. Personally, I found that the labs actually helped me understand what the real life use cases of a particular service was. It wasn't just some abstract theoretical thing I was learning about. The services actually had some pretty interesting real life use cases. But learning the content only gets you part way in passing the certification. I'd say it's even more important to remember the content. A while ago, I was talking to a colleague about AWS certifications. He had done a Udemy course and understood all of it. And you know, he's a very smart and talented engineer. So I thought he had no problem with the exam, but he told me that he actually ended up failing. The main reason was that he wasn't able to remember a lot of the stuff that he learned. Sure, when he watched the courses and did the labs, he understood all of the concepts, but when it came time to actually recall the knowledge, he struggled. Now, this really highlighted to me the importance of practicing recalling your knowledge, AKA the active recall method. Basically, when you're trying to remember something you've learned, instead of just rereading your notes, ask yourself questions about it. Kind of like playing a quiz game with yourself. Studies suggest that when you pull information out of your brain on your own, it strengthens your memory and makes it easier to remember later. In terms of studying for the Solutions Architect exam, I'm a big fan of this free software called Anki. Anki is essentially a smart flashcard app that knows just when you need to be tested on a certain topic. For example, if you know a lot about the AWS Lambda service, then it'll recommend revisiting this topic less frequently. But if you're struggling to learn about step functions, it will start quizzing you on this more often. It basically solves the question of what should I study and when. When making these cards, I will take the notes that I previously made and turn them into question answer pairs on the flashcards. For example, here's some of the cards that I have. As you can see, it's not the most detailed, but this is the information that I personally needed to practice. Once I felt that I could remember most of the concepts, I was pretty happy and moved on to actually practicing exam questions. Practicing for the exam. So at this stage, I started to test myself with real practice papers. I initially tried the free sample exam questions published by AWS. And I think they're definitely a good starting point, but I found that firstly, it didn't cover enough services, which 
makes sense is there's only 10 questions. And secondly, the question seemed a bit too simple. I didn't want to be underprepared for a real exam. So I bought a set of practice papers from Tutorials Dojo, which were recommended online quite often. There were lots of practice exams and practice questions here. And I would say the difficulty level seemed to be around what is expected in the real exam. I went through each of the practice sections in exam conditions. So no external help and under the same time conditions. For any questions that I got wrong, I did some more research and made notes to add to my Anki deck. I think this was really helpful because after a few practice exams, I noticed that I had identified where most of the gaps in my knowledge were. And through practicing with Anki, I was able to plug those gaps. Something that I think is underestimated is exam technique. Unlike school tests that might start easy and get harder, AWS throws questions at you in a random mix. You know, your first question could be the toughest one you'll see. So it's really important to manage your time well. Don't just split your time evenly by the number of questions. Some will need a quick glance, others will need a much deeper dive. What I like to do is go through picking off the easy wins first. If a question seems doable in, say, 15 seconds, I answer it and move on. If not, I mark it for review. That way, if time runs out, it's the difficult questions that get left behind, not the easy ones. So how do you actually know when you're ready to take the real exam? For me, when I started averaging 70 to 75% on the practice exams, that gave me the confidence to take the real thing. Although if you want to be more certain, then you can always try to average a higher mark or buy more practice exams. Some additional exam tips. If you decide to take the exam at home, try and do the exam in the most boring room possible. Now, what I mean by this is the room with the least amount of stuff and the least amount of noise is in. When the exam starts, the examiner will do a pre-exam check where they'll ask you to take pictures and videos of the room that you're in. These examiners can sometimes be quite strict in terms of asking you to clear the room. You also don't want to give them any reason to think that you're cheating. So the less stuff in the room, the better. In terms of the actual exam, I would recommend making use of the flag for review feature. It's easy to get stuck on a question for a long time, but I would suggest going through all of the questions once first. You want to be sure that you've tackled all of the easy questions. But I would say personally, the time limit wasn't a huge issue for me. I finished with some time to spare, but this may vary depending on the questions being asked. AWS doesn't actually give you your result instantly because they take some time to review everything. But I found out my result around one day after the exam. This varies between person to person though, so don't worry if you haven't heard back after a few days. But what do you do after you pass the Solutions Architect exam? Well, there's actually a huge amount of overlap between the Solutions Architect and the other associate exams, like the Developer Associate. And this is exactly what I did. I studied for the Developer Associate straight after, as most of the knowledge was still fresh in my mind. And this is definitely something I recommend. So if you're interested in how I passed the Developer Associate, then check out this video.